Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. Got it. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? Got him. All right. Oh, yeah. Quality green bay fish here. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. Oh, look at that. <laughs> what a specimen. specimen. Here he comes, man. Get him. What a fish. This is In-Depth Outdoors. On today's episode of In-Depth Outdoors, we're taking a mental health day for ice fishermen. As everybody knows, unless you've been living under that rock, it's been just a horrible winter across the upper Midwest and on last week's show we were kind of at our limit for dealing with 20 below zero temperatures and at the end of the episode I said no matter what this week it didn't matter how far we were going to have to drive I was going to find some warmer weather to fish in and of course at that time I didn't know that some warmer weather was headed for the Dakotas and we're out here on the Missouri River Chamberlain South Dakota chasing walleyes. A uh, great thing about today is we got nice sunny skies. Temps are supposed to be somewhere in the mid to upper 50s, believe it or not. So we've got great conditions. It's exactly what the doctor ordered. So if you've been uh, dying to kind of scratch that midwinter open water walleye itch, come on along. I think you're going to enjoy today's show. Beautiful weather, open water, I'm going to get to the back. You're going to have to give us a push. Okay. We're going to need some 300 uh, horsepower help. I know you can do it. Quite a bit of difference to, uh, compared to last week, huh? Exactly. Soak up that vitamin D. <laughs> I don't know if you saw me in the parking lot this morning, as much as we're fishing and on the road and everything. I had my extension on my Strike Master Auger up in northern parts of the state. Yeah. And I come down here and it's long rods and open water. You've been on a bit of a tour this week. Yes, a little bit. A little bit of everything. You know, next week we'll be back on the ice, but for right now, it just feels right. right. Not having to... <laughs> yeah, exactly. There we go. What you got? Fish. All right, man. Walleye. First walleye of the open water season, dude. February 17th, Missouri River. Not a huge fish, great eating fish, but it's bigger than the one I've caught so far. For the first fish of the open water, I will definitely take it. Green jig, minnow, VMC. Okay, we'll go back and get another one. Take a jig and a minnow. Well Old done. Stand by. Well, I'm going to stick with the jig and plastic uh, just long enough to let you get about two or three ahead of me. That's it. <laughs> Put my foot down. Oh, it's like being rocked in your mother's arms. <laughs> I like it. There we go. Fish on. Hey, go. that's it. I'm done with you. You need a net or? I think I can get them. Not bad. Hey, Quentin, I, I haven't kept any fish in quite a while, man. You, I mean, I wouldn't mind keeping a few if you're all right with it. Yeah, that's a great, I mean, that's like a seven, 16, 17 inch fish, just chunky Missouri River walleye. Like I just said, they are not monster fish, but for February 17th, being in a boat, I am sick, not sick of it, but staring down an ice hole and sitting in an otter to get back out in the boat and cast and just feels good. whacking jigs right there. EMC Moon Eye and a fathead. Not nearly complicated enough, right? No. Let's live well his keister. Right on. 
Skeeter Boat Center, with its flagship dealership located in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, has opened a second location in Ramsey, Minnesota, to better serve their customers. Stop in and check out the largest selection of Skeeter boats in the upper Midwest, including an extensive inventory of MX and WX models, and a wide range of Skeeter bass boats, all backed by our best price guarantee, and serviced by Yamaha 5-star service technicians. Find us online at SkeeterBoatCenter.com. And remember, our goal is to help you have fun fishing. You know what makes us even more special is back home today, obviously it's going to be below freezing and they're expecting five to seven inches of snow. Out here, middle of South Dakota, there's hardly any snow left and we're going to be in the 50s. Easy to deal with breeze. It's not going to take a lot of fish in the boat for me to feel like this is a successful day. Anybody that's been ice fishing this winter knows exactly what we've been going through. I mean, it's just been so miserable. I mean, we were down to the point of it was going to take counselor appointments or antidepressants or something to get, keep us going. So uh, I think in the long run, this is a little bit cheaper. Throw an extra tank of diesel in the truck and make the pull out here. But to be honest, it's not that bad. It's like five and a half hours. It's like a whole new world out here. Five and a half hours and you go from five to seven inches of snow and cold temperatures. It's gonna blow like mad today back in Minnesota. And here it's gonna, I mean, I've stripped about two layers off that I normally wear when I'm ice fishing. Won't wear gloves today, won't wear a hat today. Good medicine. Got him! Right on top of your waypoint from the last time, Quentin. On the board. On the board. You're on the board. Oh, he gonna be good in the batter. <laughs> Come the here, same buddy. Animal. That's a live wheel fish right there. Perfect. 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 Kind of feels like about an eight pounder to me based on my mood right now. Quentin, would you do me a favor and uh, live wheel that guy for me, please? Did you go to Minnow? I did. I went to Minnow. I don't like being outfished very much. You were two up on me and I had to kind of pull the plug Battle on that. back. Another one for a little fish fry. Yeah, copied your jig color, jig weight, the everything. Whatever works. But that was right on that same waypoint. Something holding them. Well, you can see on the shoreline, it, it kicks out right here. Yeah. Bunk. Well, we're through those waypoints. Should we hop on down to the next hole? Yep. Exactly. Yes, indeed. <sighs> Zip. That's a pretty solid pass. Uh, three fish on that pass. That's not too bad. Marking a lot of fish right now. Got him. Just as I said it, too. Marking lots of fish right now. Boom. There's a decent fish. Ha <laughs> ha. Switch colors on him. Went to that pink chartreuse hammerhead jig. A little bit heavier because we do have some wind today. I dig it. Quentin, I need an assist, sir. Boxer? Yes, please. You got him? Thank you. I got him. Working on a pretty good meal of fish. Yeah, we're doing all right. Quarter ounce chains, three eighths ounce? I went to a three eighths. Okay, I got a quarter on. I thought about the three eighths. I'll give this a little and see what we turn up. I think with the wind, I might be better off the three eighths. I know I was struggling with it a little bit. Make the cast and the line would get away from me, get too much of a bow in it. You know, the pattern we're fishing today is really pretty simple. We're, we're targeting the deeper pools of water that we're finding up and down the length of the river. And as it turns out, we've got a little bit of deeper water over my right shoulder here. Comes up fairly sharply into this flat where you see all this old, flooded, broken off timber. So all we're doing is we're just working down this break, throwing jigs up into about 12 foot of water, bouncing them back to the boat, and I'm keeping the boat right there in that 15, 16, 17 foot of water range. So we're not actually in the deepest part of these deeper holes. We're kind of on the edge of it, throwing it up shallow, just dragging it back real slowly. And we're fishing 
heavier jigs than we normally would uh, using this presentation. I mean, if I had it my way, I'd be throwing eight ounce jigs right now. But uh, obviously, as you can see, it's way too windy. So we've uh, up to three eighths ounce jigs. What it allows us to do is keep our lines just a lot tighter, better contact with that jig. So when these fish do grab those baits, we're able to pick it up and feel it. I mean, they're hitting it pretty hard, but if you've got a huge, huge bow in your line from fishing too light a jig, that fish can hit it as hard as he wants, and you'll never know it until he gets all that slop out of the line. So three eighths ounce jigs seem to be about right today, uh, staying right in about 15, 16 foot, foot of water with the boat, throwing up shallow. At Skeeter Boats, our passion for turning great ideas into even better fishing boats has produced an unmatched lineup of models intended to fit the way you fish. Like the WX series, designed to handle big water in tough conditions, including the new MX1825, built from the ground up to be the ultimate 18-foot fishing boat, and Skeeter Bass Boats, setting the standard for speed and fishability. Skeeter, engineered like no other. The section we're fishing today here out of the Missouri River is upstream from Chamberlain and it's actually below the Big Bend Dam and you know we could actually in you know a couple months from now uh, run a lot further downstream but we're kind of stuck to a fairly small isolated area because uh, you get down a couple bends further than we fished today and you run back into ice again and as we cross the bridge this morning coming from Chamberlain uh, headed for the boat landing, we could actually see cars driving out around the ice down there. So it's good and solid yet, but there's plenty of open water up here and obviously plenty of fish to catch. So it's not like we're uh, stuck in a very small spot with not enough fish to make it worth a trip. And of course, as this warm weather settles in here, each day you're going to open up miles and miles of river. So it won't be long in those cars that we saw today out there below the bridge down there in Chamberlain. That'll be a thing of the past and it'll be all boats. Oh, attaboy, Quentin. You need the net? Uh, I think we're good for now. We'll see what he is. Nice there fish, go. bud. There go. Only counts if you get him in a the boat. There we yeah. go. That's a chunker. I switched up a little, went back to that hammerhead jig, green, oh, chartreuse, nice fish. Well, that same depth we were talking about, 12 to 14 foot, a little bit better quality. We just kind of moved to a little bit different same spot. We had fished a little bit earlier in the day, a little bit darker water, and that fish came up and just smacked it. In the last spot we were at, we had, you know, cleaner water, and they were a lot more tentative. We were getting some short strikes coming back with half a minnow, but this fish came up and walloped it. So. We're gonna get another minnow and get back out there. Hey, Quentin, I seem to have an issue with my jig. <laughs> I um, saw you set the hook. Oh, you just greased it. Right just when I was sitting there putting that one in the box. You need a minnow too? I need another minnow. Yeah, that uh, that was not a good feeling. I mean, it was great for a split second, and then it was awful. Just pounded it. Nicely done, that was a nice fish, man. Thank you much, I'm going to get another one. That one uh, counts uh, for two of the ones that I got earlier. <laughs> They're just fish, they're just loaded on the bottom here. Littered, filthy. I can feel myself recharging. Like a, like a battery in a charger. I'm just, I'm getting better, I'm getting healthy. Things were a little dire there for the last couple weeks. I mean, uh, we've been doing an ice fishing show every week since, well, the end of November. And the last time I saw any kind of weather like this, I was out on, um, Lake Michigan fishing with Paul Delaney for big smallmouth when it was 40 some degrees and since then it's been pretty brutal. It started to wear on everybody, me, everybody I was fishing with, the camera guys. One more day of 20 degree below weather and I think I'd have had a mutiny on my hands so this is this is just what the doctor ordered here. You went back to green right away? Yeah. Okay I'll stick with the orange a little bit we'll see. Why not huh? And then I'll try something else. I'm gonna go back to pink. Got him. There's one. Oh, he ain't so bad. Come here, buddy. Boy, did he just give it the lightest little kiss. Picked it up. I kissed him back. <laughs> that one'll eat. That'll box. I like this little routine we got going here, Quentin. You're my best buddy. You catch him. I yep. box him. Well, I think that's, uh, I'm only one ahead of you, so <laughs> I can't claim any superiority or anything. 
What we got going is we basically have uh, two spots where we've got waypoints where we've been able to catch more than one fish off that spot. And the spots are kind of shallow, uh, 13 to 16 feet deep. Uh, this spot in particular has got real clear water. And what we're finding is we have to bounce back and forth between those spots. They're about a mile apart, and it seems like we'll get two, three fish off a spot, then it goes dead. Could be because the boat's drifting through it or some of the you know, electric motor noise. We're not really sure, but it doesn't matter. Just as long as we know to just not sit on one of those spots and just kind of keep pounding it out, hop back and forth, and then you know, as soon as we show up on the spot, a new spot again, after it's kind of you know, calmed down a little bit, we catch fish right away. We should be able to do this most of the day, catch fish throughout, just keep bouncing back and forth. Well, should we hop back up to the other spot? Yeah. Looks logical right now. At the moment. Makes sense to me. Markham Technologies introduces ice fishing to the digital age with the LX Digital Sonar System. Boasting vivid color LCD displays and features not found on other ice electronics, all digital units offer a user-defined display tailored to match the way you fish. An on-screen dashboard that puts critical information at your fingertips and free firmware updates that guarantee your electronics are never outdated. This winter, step into the digital age with an LX Series Digital Sonar Unit from Markham Technologies. So we're gonna fish till dark. It's about a five and a half hour tow back home. And when we get home, I get to shovel snow. <laughs> it's gonna be a readjustment period, I guarantee you that. Pretty similar all along the Missouri River here. You know, I fished Lake Oahe, which is North Dakota border down to Pier. Then you have Lake Sharp, which is Pier down to the Big Bend Dam here. And then we're on Francis Case here, which runs actually down to Pickstown. And then you get into Lake Lewis and Clark and pretty similar pattern all along you know it's kind of starts early in the year is jig bite early on and you know like I said it's February 17th here but by March on just about all four of those reservoirs there's a good you know jig and minnow bite going there's a great fishery all the way from from the North Dakota border basically down to Pickstown and beyond you know in Nebraska so the thing that really stands out for me about this area is just how much warmer it is on average I mean you start to think you know, North Dakota, South Dakota, you think bitter winters. And every time I look at the weather for Platte, South Dakota, it's 25 to 30 degrees warmer than back home. You know, we drive out here five hours and it's 50 some degrees today. Yep. The I'm ice fishing in... season up here is just so short compared to ours. I mean, in another couple of weeks, for all intents and purposes, they're, I mean, they're done on the river up here. When we look on the banks, you got, you know, some frozen bank ice, but literally no snow. And when you get down, it's like, it's almost like that I-90 corridor I-90, you can draw a line, and I don't know what it is, but you talked about on average, it's like throughout the winter, they have so many days, even December, January, and then early February here, where, like you said, you look and 45, 50, and I said, those guys are singing and dancing down on the ice down there, or they're out in the boats, and where I live, up on Highway 12, you know, Webster to Aberdeen up there, we're freezing our cans off still. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. One of the obstacles that we're starting to run into up by us is too many extensions. I don't want to go places where I got to run two extensions, you know, but I think it's going to become a reality here in a, in a heck of a hurry where a lot of the places that we'd go late season, particularly for, you know, better walleye bites, you're looking at some major work uh, to just make a hole in the ice. And you look in the forecast at single digit temps coming up, you're starting to question yourself how much is, how much, how much ice are we going to get and how long are we going to have it? Last year we had, we still had fishable ice May 1. We were still walking on fishable ice. I personally would like to be in the boat long before that, but <laughs> I'll take ice in April. I have some pent up walleye anger to <laughs> unleash uh, next week. I'm not sure where we're gonna go, but I've kind of got this uh, thing in my head now that we need to go beat up on some big walleye through the ice. You know, we're not done by any means with our ice fishing broadcast. I mean, this is a, uh, a rare treat. It's kind of a, uh, a break in the action, so to speak, to kind of recharge our batteries, as we've said many times, but next week we're gonna be back on the ice. We've got a couple of real good ideas for some great ice bites yet that we're gonna, you know, make part of the broadcast season. But this is week 14. I mean, last week was halfway through our 26 week season. You know, we, we wrap up May 18th, so we've got a lot of fishing yet to do. So 
a couple more uh, ice fishing episodes and that'll transition us real nicely right into uh, the rest of our, our, our season where it's going to be mostly open water, a lot of rivers. Detroit River, Wisconsin River, Mississippi River, you know, a lot of the lakes, of course, are still going to be, you know, froze up well into April, so those are off the table, of course. But uh, we'll have a lot of big walleyes to catch, or I hope we do. Come on, fish. Well, it got him. Got him. <laughs> there he is, man. That's the way it's supposed to work. Now, that fish was a little bit deeper. 17 foot of water. Kind of one of those smaller end fish for what we've had today, but certainly a nice fish. I know he would definitely not make the live well based on his size. We've got some that are definitely nicer than that. Nice looking fish though, glistening in the, the sun there as the sun's starting to set. See you later, buddy. Quentin, I need a middle. I got you. Nothing's changed. This has basically been the, the prescription for the day. Same jigs. We've talked about it a little bit that really all, all we've had to change is just some of the colors that we've used. Green and clearer water. When the wind was really kicking, we used more oranges just to give a little bit better visibility down there so these fish could find the baits. You know, it's amazing what that wind was doing to this water clarity. I mean, it would turn it from pretty crystal clear like we have here to just chocolate, chocolate milk. We're getting down to scraps on the minnows. I don't know how many fish we've caught today. I mean, the action's been real spaced out all throughout the day. Hit a new spot, catch a couple fish, move on to the next spot, catch a couple fish, and then hop back and forth between the areas we've found. We've never really had a long drought period, and we've never really had a time of the day where we've caught you know a whole bunch of fish in a short amount of time. It's just been steady all day long. Sun's going down. I think I've used just about the last bit of big bait that we've got. We've got, gone through a lot of minnows today. Um, sun's setting over my shoulder, so I think it's time to go put this boat back on the trailer. What do you say, Quinn? You get your fill? I got my fill. I am recharged, ready to go for the rest of winter. <laughs> well, I figure we got about five more hours until we get back to reality. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the Twin Cities looks like when we uh, roll back in. I know they got a lot of snow today. You know, anytime we come to a new body of water like this, uh, we've got a couple different goals. Uh, but I've always said, uh, anytime you get to go to a, a new area, catch one fish on a newly discovered spot, that's a success. So uh, today on all accounts, you figure in the weather, got to spend time with a great buddy, uh, Quentin Bierman, and we got to catch some fish on a, on a body of water that we had absolutely no experience with. Uh, everything came together exactly the way we wanted them. I mean, hey, if an eight pounder would have come my way, that had been just icing on the cake. But uh, really now, what Quentin and I have to look forward to uh, is we're rejuvenated. Uh, what, what has been a very, very tough winter, we're ready to tackle the rest of it. And I figure we've got a couple, three, four more weeks of good ice fishing shows yet to go. So uh, from Quentin and I, he's backing down the truck. Uh, I'll say goodbye tonight. Uh, thanks for watching from both of us. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.